Dr. Edward Tim. Uh, I wrote a report about this. It, here's the genesis. I retired too young, okay? It was a mistake. I stepped away from what was the very best thing that I was good at. So I got bored. Then I got interested in this pipeline, and that was three years ago. It's been a very interesting project, very challenging project. My report covers the first 48 years of this pipeline's existence from when it was late in 1953 to 1991 when Enbridge started propping it up on a basis that was a very, very accelerated. Uh, my report has three parts. Appendix one is historical study of the unsupported spans in this pipeline. Uh, as it was finished, there were unsupported spans up to 160 feet, which is way over the red line as far as any of the previous uh, engineering commentary. Uh, these come from blueprints that were released by the governor's uh, pipeline task force, and those, uh, those documents were invaluable. I wouldn't be able to do it, so I really want to thank anybody that participated on that. Uh, in that handout there is what I call the smoking gun permit application. That's a little uh, maybe over the top, but in 1991, Enbridge said repairs on this line cannot wait because of all these large unsupported spans. I'd really like to know why they came to that conclusion. That information is not publicly available. Appendix two, it's about the coatings. This report isn't really about coatings at all, but I had a bunch of coating information and I was too lazy to write a separate report. So I stuck it in this one in an appendix. Uh, when Bechtel designed this system for coating is on this pipeline, the coating system had seven layers. As I understand it, we're down to zero, one, or two now. Uh, I'll remind you that it was a delaminated coating that caused 6B to fail. Oh, and line ooh. 6B oh. had a cathodic protection system. Woo. That's not magic. Uh, when as far as inspecting these coatings, I'm very interested in how Enbridge plans to inspect the bottom half of the pipeline where it's laying on the dirt. Yeah. That's a little tough to me. I, my imagination isn't that good. Final point. Uh, Mr. Berenike said the slats that were on this pipeline were intended as, to just protect it during the construction. I can't support that. There's information in one of the reports, it's referenced in Appendix 2, that said those slats were there to prevent point loadings on the pipe, abrasion, and it doesn't say anything about them being temporary. Uh, that's the only document I have. I'd like to know more about the his genesis of the coating system on the pipeline. Yeah. Main body of my report. Can turn, it, it comes from talking to Bruce Trujan, the only engineer that was there when this thing was put down. And Bruce was quite concerned it used up a lot of its fatigue life. It was bent around during construction, and it's probably been bent around a lot more by the currents under the straits. Uh, fatigue is forever. My calculations, and engineering is about calculations. It's not about words. There's plenty of calculations in there. Just one of the spreadsheets for the buoy data I used was an Excel spreadsheet 11 columns wide and 194,000 rows. That took a little massaging. It's a good thing <laughs> nobody was, I wasn't charging anybody. The bill would have been high. Uh, I believe this pipe has some compromised metal in it in certain sections. I believe that information needs to be fed to the people that are, in, uh, that are trying to do a fitness for service determination for this board. Uh, However, I don't think they can do it. I don't think task 3.4 of the biota investigation, which is the stress analysis. You take all this biota information, all this coding information, all the current information, and put, plug it into a stress analysis, and that gives you the answer you're looking for. I don't think they can do task 3.4. I don't think dynamic risk can properly evaluate option five without having better current data under the straits. Uh, Professor Meadows there, I think, would understand. The data we have is average data. On the average, everybody in here weighs 160 pounds, but that doesn't quite tell what it's for. So that my report, it's, uh, you know, and, and I make a recommendation, a common sense recommendation in my report for how this line might be restricted. Whenever there's an extreme current event in the straits, I believe it should be inspected, and I make a recommendation for that. I make other recommendations. But just to say, it's just summing up in here. This thing's a triple winner. It's got fatigue metal, can compromise <laughs> coating, and fit muscle growth. I believe the so hydro test sorry, they're doing is good. Um, but they should do something called a volumetric hydro test.